Alright, Shalom, Yasharala Shalom. It's the brother Ash Ibar back on the streets once again. Before I get started, I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh and a mighty Shalom to the hopeful elect, man. Peace and blessings to the scattered sheep across the four ones of the earth. And I know I haven't been out here in a cool minute. To be honest, you know, I haven't had no transportation. My car died on me, so I haven't really been able to drive or get around. But the Lord blessed me with a car this weekend, so I figured I'd come out and I'd do a lesson. So Lord willing, it's edifying for you brothers and sisters who listen. And basically in today's video, man, I want to get into the aspect of you must be able to see the truth amongst the lies. You must be able to see the truth amongst the lies. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 7 and we'll go to verse 13. It says, enter you at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. So just like when it comes to finding a treasure, many people seek out that treasure. They seek out that money. They seek out that golden gem, but only a few will be able to find it. And how do you usually find a treasure? You got to have a treasure map. And that's what this Bible is. It's a treasure map for the lost sheep of the nation, the Yasharala, to be able to read, break down, and understand it, and to be able to uh, correlate the things of this Bible to the world that we're living in. That's why they love to constantly attack the words of the Most High Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Because if they can demonize this book, which is the true understanding of where we're at in this world, what's right, what's wrong, where all the where all the nations and people of the earth come, and more importantly, who are the chosen nation of the people, the true Jews, the true Israelites, according to the Bible, uh, relating to curses, history, and prophecy, then we're able to understand it and gain knowledge and wisdom about the world that we live in. It's like a cheat code. You see what I'm saying? But getting back into the main point, unless you have a true treasure map and you're able to read the map correctly. You're going to be lost in the sauce. You're going to be cast out into outer darkness. And the vast majority of people on earth, in fact, anywhere from like 95 to 98 to 99.999% of people out here are lost in the sauce. Let's continue on, though. This is Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. It says, beware of you of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorn or figs of thistles? And a lot of people like to pick up the Bible. A lot of people like to monetize the Bible. A lot of people like to claim the Bible. But what's the point of claiming something that you can't really understand? Hey, how you doing, brother? Hey, you know you know you're the lost sheep of Israel. I'm a god. That's right. You a god? You a judge? Right? Okay, cool. Okay, bro. You still gonna die like a man? You gonna die like a man though. So that's all good. But anyways, getting back into it. So long story short, you know, there's a lot of people who try to pick up the Bible. Like the brother said, he tried to claim he's a God, but he's a mortal man. Like the scripture in, in Psalms say, you are gods on the earth, but you shall die like men. Because at the end of the day, if you're not coming in the right way, the Most High is going to show you who's the true, one true living power, one true God. And that's why we coming in. And it's, it's a great thing that I'm doing this because the topic of the lessons is in regards to a lot of these false philosophies that not only all the other nations, the heathen nations, but more importantly, our people, the lost chosen, the Lord's chosen, the lost sheep, they like to dwell into. They like to dwell into narcissism. They like to dwell into cometicism. They like to dwell into Roman Catholicism, Christianity, Islam. And essentially, they don't really have the true understanding. They want to say that they're enlightened, but they refuse to acknowledge and understand that you are in a fleshly body. You see, at the end, of, and we're going to actually get into that. Let me get this real quick. Let's go to the book of um, 2 Ezra chapter 7. And we're going to actually break down because it's funny that that brother said that's the first person I met out here. And that's what he say. So this is the book of second Ezra chapter seven. We'll start at verse 10. It says, and I say it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion, because for their sakes I made the world. Because for their sakes I made the world, and when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. Then was the entrance of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. And getting into this, if you brothers read through Second Ezra, it's basically overlaying the understanding of what happened in the beginning. You know, a lot of people like to say that Adam and Eve, they ate a fruit that was corrupted. But in actuality, 
they did eat a fruit, but spiritually it was something that corrupted their mind. They ate other philosophies of this world to try to deify themselves, to try to idolize themselves and put themselves on a pedestal when at the end of the day, you're supposed to be looking up. You're supposed to be looking up from a downward position so that way you can keep everything in proper perspective. You see, when you don't know the true order of the most high, the divine order that he stipulated, him being on top, his son being underneath him and us being underneath his son and a woman being underneath us is going to cause all sort of chaos and confusion. So you got people in third rank trying to be first rank. You got people in third rank trying to be second rank. You got people in fourth rank, the woman trying to put herself as a God, trying to put herself as a man. And that's why in this society, we dwelling in nothing but chaos and confusion because people don't really understand order. The Most High says, let everything be done in order. But when we try to do everything on our own with our own understanding, it causes nothing but chaos and confusion. And the powers that be, the, the dark rulers of this world, the high-ranking elite, the Luciferians, the Satanists of this world, the, the uh, high-ranking um, families, they want you to be in a state of confusion. They want a so-called black man to walk around in pride and say, I am a God, I am a God. Okay, bro. All right, we're going to see who's really a God. But getting into this, let's continue on. It says... For the entrance of the world of the elder world world was wide and short and brought immortal fruit. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. So essentially, the elder world was world was wide, and we were deemed to be immortal. The the sons of the, the sons of Adam and in uh, particular the sons of Israel. We are meant to be immortal, but we have to labor for that gift due to the transgressions of our ancient forefather, Adam, because he deified himself like unto a God. Right. And I also want to get into the book of Second Ezra, chapter eight, verse one. It says the angel answered me, saying the most high had made this world for many, but the world to come for few. I will tell thee a similar to Ezra's. As when you seekest the earth, it shall say unto thee that it giveth much mold, whereof earthen vessels are made, but little dust that gold cometh of. Even so is the course of this present world. There be many created, but few shall be saved. And that's ultimately the main overarching theme of the Bible. If you as a so-called black man, a so-called, a man that they, they claim to call void of light, are you going to be able to find the light? Are you going to be able to find the way? Are you going to be able to hear the voice of the of the king shepherd to come in the right way? Are you going to be able to hear the words of the most high and come unto them in the right stead? Are you going to figure it out? Because at the end of the day, like Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and 13 said, to keep in the, the commandments of the most high, that is the whole duty of man. And not just the commandments according to, to, the, to the Torah, but all the words that were stipulated in the Bible, Christ's commandments his disciples, you know, essentially all the words of this Bible, you want to conform yourself to that image because if not, you're going to be like the many. You're going to be the people coming at that wide gate. The vast majority of people on earth is going to condemnation and torment. Or if they're not going to condemnation and torment, they're going into heavy slavery. Point blank, period. A lot of people say they want to live forever. A lot of people want to have immortality. They want to never die. But at the end of the day, only the true chosen of the Bible are going to be those who are going to be able to live forever. And all these other vain philosophies, finding nirvana, uh, you know, uh, reaching your godhood, reaching your higher self, that's all going to lead you to death and destruction. Simple. And it's all going to start because many of us choose to walk in the ways of the heathen. Let's go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. Because when you understand the beginning, you can also understand the end. Again, there is nothing new under the sun. The same things that happened in the ancient world, in ancient Egypt, in ancient Israel, in ancient Greek, in ancient Rome is going on in this day right now. And in fact, it's actually uh, decaying and things are getting a lot worse. So we're going to go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. And we're going to go to verse 9. It says, For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto the Most High. For that which is made shall be punished together with them that made it. For that which is made... Uh, Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation. Because in the creature of the Most High... Yahweh, they are becoming an abomination and a stumbling block to the souls of men and a snare to the feet of the unwise. And that's the whole topic of this, of this understanding of the Bible. There's many different things and many different creation stories about how we, we came into existence. A lot of people like to say, that's your truth. That's my truth. I respect your truth. I don't respect nothing but the truth. So if you don't got the truth, why would I respect your viewpoint on it? 
it's just that plain and simple bro a lot of people like to create different falsehoods for what they believe to be true but again there's only one truth there's only one champion in the nba you don't got four or five champions you only got one champion you only got one super bowl champion you only got one world series champion so when it comes to the understanding of how we were created on earth there's only one truth and everybody else is just believing in falsehood and lies and vanity and when you really look at and you really understand the ways of this world, the vast majority of these philosophies are based on an aspect of self-idolatry and aggrandizement. And oftentimes associating the power of the Most High and how he created everything on this earth, on this universe, on this plane of existence, and associating it with false images, false idols, worshiping the sun, worshiping the moon, worshiping yourself, worshiping the vagina of a woman. All of those things are false ideology, uh, ideologies, and that's why Israel needs to repent and come out of it, because if not, the Most High is going to kill and destroy you, and we're going to get into that. But continuing on, verse, thir verse uh, 12, it says, For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. What is that in reference to? When Adam and Eve, you know, learned the ways of the serpent, learned the ways of the deceiver, and essentially they idolize themselves as God and try to get the understanding of how to be a God compared to just abiding in the way of the most high Yahweh. Continuing on though, it says in the invention of them, the corruption of life for neither were they were they from the beginning, neither shall they be forever. For by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world and therefore they shall come shortly to an end. And I want to go down to, the, to verse 27. So this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 27. It says, For the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all. So essentially, the reason why they're sent into the world, suffering, pain, um, death, and things like that, is because us men, us, us, you know, we're, we're not really, we're lowly men in a sense. Because of our devising of idols through our ancestry, that's why we die like men. Like the brother said, you are a God, but you shall surely die like men. And you have to be able to understand that because you inherently have a nature that's going to try to dwell off into these false things. And you got to be able to rein yourself in and understand that, bro, you are nothing without the most high. You can't do anything without the Most High. If the Most High wanted to tomorrow, he could kill and destroy you. So at the end of the day, if you understand what the Most High requires of you, you have to be able to put things in the proper perspective and you have to be able to fear him. The reason why so many people are getting these uh, procedures to turn themselves from a man to a woman, a woman to a man, they're worshiping themselves as gods and they're doing these things, is because they don't got no fear. Like when you got a son, bro, if your son don't fear you, it's because he don't think you're going to beat his ass. And because the Most High has kind of just allowed the people of the earth to just do what they want, people don't really have a fear of the Bible and they don't have a fear of what's to come on this earth. Just like the days of Noah. This is Proverbs 1 and 7. It says, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And essentially, most people would rather believe in a lie, just like how they believed that the lockdowns was a real thing. Just like how they believed that the C-19 virus was a real thing until what happened? Until the news came out that it was falsehood. But a lot of people chose to believe in their delusion because they like to be simple-minded. They like to be docile and quiet is kept. The vast majority of people and the vast majority of the so-called blacks and Hispanics, the people of the captivity, y'all like to be ruled over. Whether it be a man like to be ruled over by his woman, put in, put in as a as a baby position and let, him, let her run all over him. Whether it's y'all going to church and worshiping Caesar Borgir, the quote-unquote image of white Jesus, and you like to really worship to moves, the sun god, or the son of the sun god, Salakia, or rather just be y'all like to be in, in, in a state of subjection and constantly beg that people who will never ever do anything for your community, the Republicans, the Democrats, you waiting on them to save the day, and that's why you still in the damn position you in right now. You walking around in a circle, you just like that little video, there was sheep going, sheep going around in a circle, being led nowhere until they eventually would, would drop down and die. Because that's how it is in this plane of existence that the vast majority of our people are just quite frankly not going to understand. So you brothers have to be able to understand and see the light amongst the darkness, see the forest amongst the trees, see the truth amongst the vanity. Because once, you, once you're able to understand that, and more importantly, you're able to understand who you are, and you're able to understand what the Most High wants you to do in order for you to reach that, that state of illumination on the right-hand side, 
in regards to following the ways of Christ, then you're going to be able to actually get somewhere on this earth. Otherwise, you're going to continue to be at the bottom. You're going to continue to be the tail. Women are going to continue to disrespect you. You're going to continue to be debt slaves. You're going to continue to be oppressed and spoiled forevermore. Let's actually get that in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 29. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 29. It says, you will grope at noonday as the blind grope in darkness. And that's a dark saying, meaning right now it's noonday, but a blind person can't see. A blind person can't see the light. So people will be in the light looking in, in the blind day, thinking that they have some sort of understanding, but they're really going to be moving blind, kind of like a zombie, kind of like somebody who's sleepwalking, right? And you will not prosper in your way because if you don't have light, how can you understand where you need to go? How can you be guided? Just like if you see a ship in the ocean, how does it know how to get into the port? A light will shine and show a way for it. And the vast majority of people are spiritually blinded. Your pineal gland is completely blocked. Your spiritual eye is completely blocked. And you've been completely severed from the ways of the Most High. So what's going to happen to you? It says, and you will only be oppressed and spoiled evermore that no man will save you. And that's why when y'all believe in Nation of Islam, is the, the, the um, religion of Islam, Black Kemeticism, Black Moors, there's so many different religions that so-called blacks follow. That's why y'all don't prosper because y'all don't know up from down. Y'all don't know left from right. Y'all are basically just walking around in a circle and you're just allowing all these other people, all these other nations to do it, whatever they want of you. You see what I mean? And that's the battle that we're going into. I wanna actually get this in the book of First Timothy chapter four, verse one, because it's actually prophetic that the vast majority of people on earth will be led into a seducing spirit. Now, this is 1 Timothy chapter 4. Hey, how you doing? Hello. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Oh, okay, you about to just sit down? Okay, all right, no problem. All right, this is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. It says, now the spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, meaning in the end times, many will depart from faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And this is speaking of people who are coming into the understanding, understanding who the true Jews were, understanding who the real Israelites were, according to the Bible, who are walking in this thing at a certain time, they would eventually be given away to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. Because we're kind of in a transitionary period. You see, before, I would say 2020, but throughout the decades, the people who ran the world, they essentially hid to you what a lot of these things mean. They wanted to keep everything behind the curtain. You see what I'm saying? Kind of like if you watch a TV show, right? You only see what's presented into you, but you don't know who the actors are. You don't know if they have a voiceover. You don't know essentially how things were, pro were uh, produced per se, right? But essentially what's happening is with the internet, with the most high allowing the knowledge to be increased through, you know, the internet, social media, the world wide web, and more importantly, the most high, you know, pouring his spirit upon us in these last days to allow men and women to be able to truly understand what the Bible is actually about is spreading across the four corners of the earth. There's people in Japan understanding who the real Israelites are. You got people in Africa, people in Europe, and we not gonna stop until that day comes because at the end of the day, the scripture said, Let's actually get that. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 24. Because again, Yahweh Shai, a.k.a. what the world calls Jesus Christ, he actually said that when the true gospel was preached across the four corners of the earth, then the end will come. So this is Matthew. We can go to chapter 24. And we'll go to verse 14. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And again, that was the role of Kanye West. That was the role of Mr. Kyrie Irving to not only try to demonize the understanding of the Bible, but to allow certain nuggets to be sparkled, to be sprinkled across the lost sheep, across the four corners of the earth. So that way they can actually get true understanding of their history, not what they try to teach you in these damn history classes about you were born as a slave. You came from the West Coast. All, all that sh Most of that is made up narrative. Some of our people did come on slave ships, but the vast majority of so-called blacks and uh, indigenous Americans, indigenous natives, they were actually on the land before. The people you call the Aztecs, the people you call the Olmecs, the Mayans, those are actually uh, the lost tribes of the 
northern kingdom the majority of them and a lot of times when you look through ancient european history or medieval history they call it the dark ages it's because the the people of darker color actually ruled those lands that's another thing that they don't want to tell you but again if you love lies and you hate the truth you're gonna think that i don't know what i'm talking about if you really believe that what I'm saying is falsehood, why don't you go and prove it? Why don't you go and do your own research and see what I'm telling you is true? Because somebody said that the Israelites were black. I didn't believe them immediately, but I did some research. I read the Bible for myself and I compared it to Christianity. And this made sense because at the end of the day, all the lies on this earth are going to be cast away. All the false gods are going to be cast away. But what the Most High truly stated is going to come to pass. When you go to the book of Matthew, even Christ himself said it. This is Matthew chapter, um, Salaki. This is Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. It says, Think not I came to destroy the law. Think not I came to destroy the prophets. I never came to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, until heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from this law till all be fulfilled. What Christ was basically letting you know is the earth can be in chaos the heavens can be falling from the sky but the words of his father yahweh will never pass and that's why even when this world is going into chaos and we have a lot of these rumors of war with ukraine with russia with taiwan with china with china and japan with iran and israel you obviously see that a lot of chaos is going to come you got them trying to promote <laughs> lab grown meat because they're not sitting here telling you that the land is cursed so bad to the point where they have to modify the food that you eat because they're running out of food. They don't tell you that the Mississippi River is drying up, the Ohio River is drying up, that the Euphrates River in the land of Iraq, Iran is drying up. What does that mean? That means that there is a drought upon the waters because the whole earth is cursed because the Most High is sending plagues upon the land. So what is that telling you? That's telling you that we're going into a dark time, right? But the words of the Most High will never be destroyed regardless of what's coming on this earth if you have faith if you don't have faith if you're not a child a, a children of faith you're just not gonna you're gonna tune it in and tune it out but if the lord is really working with you and you understand the words that i'm saying and what other brothers are saying you're gonna start to be able to understand what's really going on around you kind of like neo in the matrix right when he took that red pill when he got that dose of truth of bitter truth he started to open up his eyes and see who he really was he started to fall out of that that mindset of slavery and he started to open up his mind and really seek out what this world is really about because everything on this earth is a lie it's a mirage and the people who run this earth the edomites the people that y'all call the so-called caucasian man but in particular the tribe of amalek the caucasian jews they rule off of deceiving and telling you that this people is not this people and this people is this people so that way they can construe your brain and can construe the things that you think you know that's why you got to have faith even though you don't have full uh 100 historical evidence from what these people around you are telling you you do your own research and you have enough faith in what you've read and what you study that you believe it regardless of what anybody else is telling you that's when you have real faith not when everybody's on your side but when nobody's on your side but you're able to stand tall because at the end of the day you are a lion at heart especially you so-called black men a lot of y'all like to look at yourself as slaves a lot of y'all like to look at yourself at the bottom of the totem pole a lot of y'all like to look at your own skin and i know it because this is how i was before you like to look at your own skin and think that you're cursed, just like what the Mormon church told you, that if you have darker skin, you're cursed. When in actuality, the Most High gave you a spiritual eye, he gave you a physical body, and he gave you a spiritual mind above anybody on this earth. But if you can't believe that yourself, how can somebody else believe that? That's why Christ said, know you not that the kingdom of heaven is in you, meaning that you have everything inside of you if you follow his way, if you follow the ways of the Most High to be able to unlock and unleash your true potential. Because your true potential is to be a ruler. Your true potential is to be a king. Everybody says they're a king, but are they ready to, to deal with the hardships and the responsibility of it most people can't take it but if you are really chosen of the most high he's going to change your whole outlook on life he's going to change your whole perspective on who you are but anyways i know i'm i'm getting off track so i want to actually get into the book of um second thessalonians so that way y'all can understand that right now we are in a time of spiritual darkness i promise you that this is second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 it's, the title is do not be deceived what is what is the apostle paul telling you right it says verse one now you we beseech you brethren by the coming of our lord yahweh shai hamashiach or aka quote unquote they call him jesus christ that's not his actual name in the hebrew but we'll just use that 
by a gathering together that you shall not soon be shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word more, nor by a letter as from us as that the day of christ is at hand let no man deceive you by any means for the day of christ will not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition so basically what paul was letting you know is that until christ comes there's going to be a time where many people will fall away from the morals and grounds of the bible and of what's right and wrong due to the state of the of the planet earth with all the things that i've already explained right and the man of sin be revealed and it's not talking about the antichrist the guy who's half male half female you know i'm sure y'all brothers probably seen different cartoons where you see the quote-unquote antichrist he wears glasses or he looks like a half half man half devil it's actually talking about the people who run this earth who worship the baphomet if y'all brothers ever look up the picture of the baphomet right that half god half goat half bull half man half half women half man that's who they actually worship and when you look up the image of quote-unquote white jesus and you actually look at the same image of the baphomet they have the exact same symbols showing you that that is actually the god of this world the goat god they call him the devil but if you actually look about him in conventional history his name is called pan does that make sense so essentially oh how you doing you got a question uh, uh the man of perdition what, what do they call the wicked man of the earth so essentially uh the wicked man of the earth is actually a, a false entity are you familiar with the image of the devil where he has horns and he has a pitchfork that's actually just the way that they describe him but the people of this earth like the government um i don't know if you ever heard about freemasons before so if you do your research the, the many high-ranking politicians governments they worship what's called the goat god. You ever hear people talk about, oh, you're the goat, you're the goat this, you're the goat that. Have you ever heard of that before? Essentially, that's who the people of the earth worship. And what they try to do is they try to lie to you and say that I, I praise God, I love God, but they're just using God as a term for their God, not the actual God according to the Bible. And that's, what's, that's why a lot of people are being misled. You know, they're going to churches and they're telling you to believe in the uh, uh, image of Christ, but that's a false image. They're telling you to worship Islam or the, the God Allah when he actually represents the moon God. It's a false image, right? So the vast majority of people on earth believe in false religions. Does that make sense? What do you believe in? I'm gonna ask you a question. What do you believe in? But how do you determine if somebody's good or bad? How can you determine? Because I'll tell you an example. I'm, I'm gonna ask you an example, right? Okay, I understand where you're coming from. And I felt that way too. But the one thing that I wanna tell you is, have you ever read the Bible before? Uh-huh. what's good in so so i'll tell you this right because i'm sure you've ever heard you know what adultery is right where a man sleeps with another man's wife right now according to the bible that's bad and i don't believe in that but if you were to ask a man a man will say there's nothing wrong with sleeping with another man's wife right if you go to um let's go let's say you go to iran right and you were to talk to a member of isis or you were to talk to a member of al-qaeda they have young boys that they strap up with bombs in the name of their God. And they think that what they're doing is good, right? But to us in America, we would call them murderers and enemies, right? So how do we really know what's good or bad unless a higher creator has given us a certain understanding of that according to his word, right? You see what I mean? Because if I was to ask all these people in this park what they think is good, they're gonna give me a completely different answer. You see what I mean? So that's kind of why it's kind of dangerous to say that there's a universal goodness because everybody's definition of good is completely different. Does that make sense? Now, have you ever heard of the Hebrew Israelites? Are you familiar? There's sometimes I have brothers similar to me where they'll be dressed. They might have like a shirt with like little fringes on the bottom and they're like grouped in and they basically teach the understanding of the Bible. Have you seen them? You might see them around the city. I don't know if you, uh, you live around here.
The 12 tribes of Israel, yeah, yeah. Are you starting to hear about it? Well, with Kyrie Irving and Kanye, you've been hearing about that on the news? Yeah. So essentially what's going on, I don't know if you remember when I read in Matthew where I said the gospel will be preached across the four corners of the earth. What they teach you in Christianity is not the real gospel. Because what they tell you is that if you quote unquote believe in the image of Jesus Christ, the image that they showed you in the church, I'm sure you're familiar with the image, right? They say that if you just believe on him and believe in his name and you don't do anything, you will be saved. But one thing that they don't tell you is that the Most High, the God of the Bible, he says that in... Yeah, that's false. Yeah. Well, Christian, Christians will tell you that. Now you're good. Christians will tell you that, but they'll say that when it comes to what's good and what's bad, they'll say that there's only two laws, to love your neighbor as thyself, and the first law is to love the, the Most High God with all thy heart. But one thing that they never tell you, this is how you really love the most high, right? Are you familiar how the Bible speaks about how there are commandments that you are to follow? And if you don't follow them, the Lord will punish you. So the, so that's that's the thing. That's that's the, the second the second uh, commandment. The first commandment is you will have no other gods before me. The second commandment is you shall not use my name in vain. That's a form of blasphemy. If you say that the most high is something negative. That's a form of blasphemy and he can punish you by death. But I want to read this because I don't want to I don't want to make it. I know you're kind of new to what I'm talking about, so I don't want to make it too um, complicated. But this is what the Most High tells his people, the, the nation of Israel. If you want to really be somebody that he will protect and watch over. This is the book of Psalms, chapter one, verse one. It says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the godly, ungodly. So basically, he'll say that you're blessed if you don't walk in the company of people who aren't godly, who are bad people, right? It says, nor stand in the way of people who are sinners, nor sit in the seat of, of the scornful. But his delight, meaning the, light of a, the delight of a godly man, is in the law of the Most High. And he, and in his law, you will meditate day and night. So if you want to be pleasing unto the Lord, you have to listen and read his book. And believe in the commandments that he gave you but the thing is his commandments are only given for one nation of people which are the Israelites the 12 tribes of Israel so when Christians say that all nations can believe on his son and be saved that's the biggest lie on earth the only people who can be given everlasting life are if you're of the seed of Israel but more importantly if you're of the right mind the right spirit does that make sense It is a clearing house. I don't know if I don't know if you I don't know if you read what I if you listen to what I read earlier. This is in the Bible. So this is a book called Second Ezra chapter eight, right? Oh, my name is Brandon, but my Hebrew name is Ash. Yeah, my, my Hebrew name is Ash. What's your name? Melissa. Melissa. Okay. Okay. So I'll read this for you, right? The Hebrew name is Ash. Means means fiery. Because sometimes I speak with a, a sense of fire sometimes. But but this is it right here. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 8 verse 1. And the angel of the Lord answered me saying, The Most High has made this world that we're living in right now for many, but the world to come for few. So essentially, the, the, the real world, the, the true world that how the earth is supposed to be made is only meant for a select few people, right? This is just a temporary place for your soul. Uh, to be your body is just a, a temporary vessel for your soul because when you die you know how your body gets cold your soul goes back up to the heavens to await your judgment based off of the things you did on this earth so essentially i don't want to make this too long but whenever you understand the bible and what it's saying this is the book of uh romans chapter 11 and i'll go to verse 7 it says what then israel did not obtain what it looked for but those who are of the elect have obtained it and the rest were blinded according to what was written god has given them the spirit of slumber eyes that they will not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day so i use you as an example the first person who came up to me i said hey you know about the the lost uh, children of israel he said i'm my own god i'm the god i'm the god and he kept walking right because I was speaking to him and I was trying to show him something, but he didn't have eyes to see or ears to hear. So he kept walking. 
But lo and behold, you heard me, you stopped. Your eyes are opening and your ears are opening. So the most high God is going to show his elect, the people who are meant to get the understanding of the Bible. He's going to show them the proper understanding of the Bible. But it's only for the remnant of Israel. Only for Israel. The other nations of the earth who are not of Israel, they only have two, two, two options. They'll either be killed and destroyed when Christ comes back and burns this land in fire. Or they will understand their role and they will be a servant of the nation of Israel. Oh, they gave you a pamphlet? Oh, like they were they were spreading the same message that I was talking about? Or what you mean? Lay? Okay. Okay, well, I understand that. But where, where's your... I know, I don't want to... I, I try not to ask people this question, but where's your family from originally? Yeah, your dad. Specifically your dad. Where's your father from? What about your family line throughout history? Are they from America? Uh huh. But they, they, but they basically predominantly lived in America. Like your family. Are you? Is your family descend from like the uh, Native American tribes? Do you know? Okay. So do you know what like? Do you know what like ethnicity your father is? Okay, because according to according to conventional history, they'll tell you that the people who ruled in Europe were like uh, the Greeks. You know how like the Greeks, they were like so-called white or whatever. They ruled for a certain period of time, but that land was actually um, conquered by so-called black people. So when you look at the origins of like uh, the Normans, you look at the Britons, you look at um, who else? Yeah, I don't know if you've heard of the Franks before. The, the Celts, you heard of like those those European um, dynasties. Are you familiar? You, it, it's a lot. I don't want to tell you too much. But long story short, though, people who ruled of Europe were actually of predominantly my color. That's why they call it the Dark Ages, right? Remember how in medieval Europe they called it the Dark Ages? Because they were trying to tell you that the people who ruled in those ages were of a darker color. How you doing, brother? But long story short, if your family comes from that land, there could be a potentiality that your father does the seed of uh, the two tribes of the nation of Israel. I don't know if you ever heard of the tribe of Judah before. Um, I was just reading about it. Yeah, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of Levi. Many of them, they they ruled in, in the land of Britain, um, Spain, the Spanish Moors, the so-called Black Moors, uh, the land of Germany, the land of France. And essentially they were kicked out of the land and that's when they were brought over to the Americas. I'm sure you remember in, in history, a lot of people from Europe, they moved to like Central America, North America. So a lot of that seed line that was established in Europe who were predominantly Israelites ruling, they moved to America. So we don't know specifically who's an Israelite, but the only way that you will truly know in these times is the spirit. If the things that I'm telling you about following the laws, um, following the ways of Christ, the true image of Christ, not what they teach you in the church, like what you learn in the Baptist church, they're lying to you, just being honest with you. Um, and you understand who salvation for, and you repent. You got to repent for your wrongdoing. If you actually believe in the Bible, you got to repent to these two names. Because you know how they say that the name of God is God, right? What What is that? Well, the J wasn't even invented until the 16th century. So when people say that Christ's name is Jesus, that's false. Because that letter was invented 1,500 years after Christ walked the earth. I don't know if you ever knew that, did you? Yeah, it's not it's not with a J. If yeah. if you actually get the that, Yeah, if you actually get the original Bible that was built in 1611, it's called the King James 1611 Bible. There are no J's in that Bible. So when people yeah, there's no name. There's no there's no J's in that Bible. If you I have one, but I normally read this one because it's translated into modern English. But there's no uh, J's in that Bible. So when people say the name of the Savior is Jesus, that's false because that letter wasn't even invented until 1500 years after he walked the earth. 
So the actual name of Christ, when you do some studying, because I don't know if you're familiar, but you know the original Bible was written in Hebrew, right? Oh, I forgot that too. Because you know the, the Israelites, they spoke Hebrew. I don't know if... When you actually do some studying on the Bible, it's written in Hebrew. So when you call in the name of God and you call in the name of his son, Christ, you have to say their Hebrew names. So their actual name, the Most High, the, the Father, his name is Yahweh. I don't know if you ever heard people say Yahweh before. Yahweh, Yahweh but it's not Yahweh. It's Yahweh. 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 And the name of his son is likened unto his father's name. His name is Yahweh. How was shy? That's his actual name in the Hebrew when you do some studying on it. Okay? So I know I gave you a lot of information. What do you think about everything that I told you? What do you think about? Like what you're talking about, so many different beliefs and perspectives, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of different information out here. A lot of people are gonna tell you different things, but like I said, everybody says that that's their truth. But there can only be one truth, right? Like there's only one one way that the earth was made, right? Right? You only have one name, right? One first name, right? Right? So, you know, there's only one actual story of what actually happened. There's one thing that's accurate and everything else that people tells you is a lie. And just to be honest with you, Hinduism is a lie. Buddhism is a lie. Islam is a lie. Conventional Christianity where you go to the church that's a lie i can keep going on and on but i have 100 percent faith and i guarantee you if you read the bible for yourself and you study it you'll understand that the word in this bible and who it's for which is for the nation of israel this is the truth and if you don't believe me throughout history you're going to start to see the things of the bible come true uh so lucky for that brother i just want to help the lady out she was listening in and that's another thing that you brothers have to understand a lot of times brothers may get caught up in an outward appearance thinking that oh he has to look like me this woman has to look like me the most high said i do not judge like i do not judge according to the ways that man judges i i judge according to what's inside let me get this real quick all right so this is a book of first samuel chapter 16 verse 7 and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said surely the lord's anointing is before him but the lord said unto samuel Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Most High sees not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Most High Yahweh looketh on the heart. And you have to be able to understand in these times throughout history, a lot of the countenance of our lost brothers and sisters has been augmented. Otherwise, how could, the, how could Revelation 7, where it says many tongues, kindreds, and nations only be Israelites if we all look the same? Now, obviously, we understand not all so-called black people have the same appearance, but we do understand throughout history, throughout the intermixing of seed, in the time of the Greeks, in the time of the Persians, in the time of the Romans, in the time of medieval Europe, many of our forefathers did intermingle their seed with other nations. So you brothers do have to understand why the majority of, so of Israelites are so-called black and indigenous natives to the land, many of the lost chosen of Israel will take on the appearance. And that's why when you brothers come out here and you judge according to the spirit, you have to be able to understand that and not allow your carnal flesh to, uh, you know, get into your mind. Because you could be denying, you could be denying the stone of Christ, bro. If you coming out here like, oh, you don't look like me, I ain't going to, come on, bro. We above that. But getting back into what I was uh, speaking on, we're obviously in a time where mass delusion is upon the people. But we're also in a time of great revealing where the Heavenly Father is actually showing you the true reality of this earth. So getting back into verse 3, it says... Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and a man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And that's where we're in the time right now. We got many celebrities, but outside of celebrities, just a lot of this word is coming out in regards to the aspect of who the dark rulers of this earth. A lot of people hear the term Lucifer and think that that's talking about Satan. Satan is just a, the adversary. He is essentially on the left-hand side of the Most High doing his bidding with his death angels but the term lucifer actually is short for luciferianism and that is essentially the spirit of wickedness that is coming upon all the people the understanding of the t word the transformer turning man to woman woman to man having two parts the parts of a man the parts of a woman you know essentially they're about to start promoting pedophilia and pederasty 
in regards to the aspect of grown men being able to touch on little kids because that is essentially the spirit of the goat god pan the baphomet you see what i'm saying there are no sexual boundaries there are no moral boundaries and we're essentially being dwelled into a land of chaos but now because the light is being revealed unto the most high uh, from the most high unto his chosen we're starting to understand what's going on right and essentially the powers that be and predominantly the high-ranking elites the caucasian jews of the tribe of amalek they're the ones who have been pushing this uh falsehood through the babylonian comedic school system which is why the vast majority of people on earth worship false gods even the ones who say they believe in christ continuing on verse four it says who opposeth and exalt himself above all that is called the most high or that is worship so that he as god sitteth in the temple of god showing himself that he is god and that's one of the aspects of the so-called caucasian man is that he has a god complex he wants to what he wants to inject you with you know i'm not gonna say it because this video might be taken down but you know a certain solution which you know has the potential to alter your rna right <laughs> he wants to what he wants to uh do away with the money system so he can track all your transactions what else he's he's practicing eugenics he's like a mad scientist i don't know if y'all ever seen rick and morty you know the the aspect of rick he just don't have no bounds no boundaries and the people of this earth they have no boundaries into what they'll do and if you're not careful you're gonna get this man your soul once he sets up his system because he wants to be like god he wants to he wants to have transhumanism he wants you to be half man half cyborg man the dude wants your whole soul but continuing on verse five it says remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know that with withhold it, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity is already at work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out. And then shall the wicked be revealed. So it's being revealed to you who are the wicked of the earth. Like Job 9 and 24 said, the world is given into the hands of the wicked. This earth, there's a worldwide kingdom that predominantly at the top, the so-called Caucasian Jews run this system. They run the banking system. They run the music industry. They run the media system. Those are the high-ranking elites who have a worldwide governmental system. America sit here and says that Japan is a free country. South Korea is a free country. No, those are vassal states. They own them. The Chinese own the vast majority of people in Africa. They, they, they're just vassal states, bro. You got to sit here and, and understand that that's a lie. The free country. Why do you think whenever a country tries to go against what America says and does, they invade them? Iraq. Why did they invade Iraq? Because Saddam Hussein did not want to continue to sell um, uh, oil with the American dollar. Why did they invade Libya? Because uh, Gaddafi wanted to set up, um, it was like an African confederation and allow those countries to come together. Why did America bomb Vietnam? because they wanted to get opioids so that way they can drug the people because that's how they make money. They launder the money through a lot of these systems. And it's no different. The so-called Caucasian man has essentially the vast majority of rule over this entire earth. And you have to be able to understand that. You have to be able to understand the falsehoods. But continuing on, let's go down to verse uh, eight. Who the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth. So essentially the wicked is being revealed we're coming out here and telling people the true understanding of what's going on because that's the spirit of the most high of the most high's mouth coming out the most high not gonna come down from his throne and speak to the people he don't work like that but he have his he have his information and his words come out and be spread through the men and the women of the lord but predominantly the men because the men are the ones who are supposed to go out and teach and break these things down like paul said i suffer not a woman to teach and if you want to really be a chosen woman of the most high you got to understand your role you know that's another thing that these people try to promote is feminism and trying to place a woman above a man when in actuality first corinthians 11 and 3 and 4 says the head of every woman is a man straight up point blank period so when these people try to exalt a woman above a man that's how you know that's the doings of satan verse verse 9 it says even him whose coming is after the working of satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved so essentially what's going to happen in these times it is going to be abundantly clear that the word that brothers and sisters that brothers is pushing out is the truth but because people love wickedness and they love lies they're gonna they're gonna uh, reject it right Let's go to verse 11. And for this cause, the Most High shall send them strong delusion, so that way they will believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Because it's plain 
who the Israelites are. The so-called blacks in captivity. Just read Deuteronomy 28. You will be brought into a land by ships and you will serve them. You will be bondmen and bondwomen. You will have an evil eye towards your brother. Your wife will have an evil eye towards your husband. You will be cursed in the city, cursed in the field. You will grope at noonday. You will be the tail and he will be the head. I mean, what other group of people is that not, is that not uh, showing you who that really is? You will be a proverb, a byword. You will be a laughing stock of the people. Why do you think they always have a nigga in a movie looking at it like a damn laughing stock? Like Kevin Hart, bruh. They never give you a role where you have some sort of power, but you looked at it as like a servant and a slave, bruh. Isaiah chapter 3 and 12. For women will rule over my people. What other group of nation of people has women ruling, ru ruling over them? Because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject thee. Hosea 4 and 6. What other group of people do they purposely try to keep you from having true understanding? Why is it Kyrie make a link on something that has some truths in it and the nigga got suspended for eight games? Why is it that, that Kanye sit here and say we are the true chosen, we are the true Jews, and he got canceled? What are they trying to tell you? That if you want to follow the truth, this is what we're going to do to you. But if you have some real balls and you have some real courage, you're going to believe it. But if you choose to continue to believe this bullshit delusion because you want everybody to like you, then essentially you're going to be led to your own destruction. Point blank, period. You know, and that's actually going into prophecy because at the end of the day, the reason why if you if you read the World Economic Forum, they're talking about they're establishing a new world order. What that's code word for is the beast system, the system that will rule over the entire earth will be revealed unto the people. Let's go to Revelation 13 and 1. It says, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. And when you read the Bible, it's metaphorical because not everybody's meant to get it. Just like when you get a book, people read the first chapter and the last chapter to try to get an understanding. But the Most High will only show you something when you read the whole thing through. Isaiah 34 and 16 says, seek out the book of the Lord and read. He's not going to just give you understanding to a Bible if you don't put no effort into it. Again, it's a, it's a map. It's a treasure map, right? You can't just look at a map and think you're going to understand it immediately. So when you read where it says, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, the beast is talking about a kingdom and the sea is talking about the sea of people, the different multitudes of people mixing together like water. The ocean has many different uh, um, bodies of water that essentially conglomerate. The land of Babylon is a land of many seas from sea to shining sea because there's many different peoples that are being um, uh, mixed together. Right. That's why it's called Babylon, the land of confusion. Continuing on. And the beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns, ten crowns and upon his head, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him in his power and his seat in great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed. So essentially the Most High says that there is nothing new under the sun. So the same Roman empire that essentially persecuted and put people under heavy subjection if they didn't follow their false pagan gods, that is the beast. So when it says his deadly wound was healed, you have to understand when the beast is essentially wounded means it lost its power. But it was healed because he was brought back into power. He was reinvigorated. America is just ancient Rome and ancient Greece reinvigorated. That's why they have the same gods. But they just lie to you and tell you that the gods are something else. Think about it. Christmas, that's Saturnalia. You're worshiping Saturn. Think about Halloween. That's the day of the dead. You're worshiping Osiris because he is the god of the dead, right? Why do you think they have... I don't even want to get into all this. It's going to be kind of long. But let's just continue on. I'm going to make this simple. And it says, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is likened unto this beast? Who is able to make war with him? Meaning who will be able to topple the so-called white man's system? He has nuclear war. Uh, he has nuclear, uh, nuclear warheads. He has drones. He has helicopter choppers. You've never seen anything like it. That's because the so-called white man, his gift was the sword. If you look at the understanding of Esau and Edom, Esau is a so-called white man. He was given the gift of the sword. That's why they're great hunters, because Esau was a mighty man of hunter. He was a mighty hunter, right? That's why the so-called white man has a, a special gift with the gun, because that's his blessing of the most high. So essentially, when this says who will be able to make war with the dragon is basically letting you know who will be able to topple the so-called white man. 
And that's why they laugh when the Israelites come out and say that we will destroy this kingdom because at the end of the day, Esau is the end of the world, the end of this time, and Jacob is the beginning. So how can a bunch of lowly niggas who come out with a Bible, who have no money, who have no power in this society, how are they gonna topple this government? They're gonna topple it when Christ comes back to save his people, bruh. Continuing on though, I'm gonna go back to the book of uh, Revelation. It says, verse five, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 42 months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against the Most High to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And there was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell unto the, upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So essentially they're going to make war with the people of the Most High. Let's continue on verse 8 it says and all that dwell upon the earth will worship him so all the people on the earth will worship this system except for those who the most high has called to return unto him and if your name is not written in the book of and it says whose name are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world if any man has an ear let him hear he that leadeth into captivity will go into captivity he that killeth with the sword will be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So when you understand what's supposed to happen in the way of the world and how things are going to be set up, the vast majority of people on earth are going to believe a lie and they're going to continue to believe in their falsehoods. But like that lady said, you know, when I was talking, she said something compelled me to go and speak unto her. At the end of the day, if the Most High is with you and if the Most High is really working with you, he's going to show you that the things in the Bible is not just a bunch of, of fairy tales. Let's actually go to the book of Luke chapter 12. So this is the book of Luke chapter 12 and we're going to go to um Salaki. This is the book of Luke chapter 12 and verse 2. It says, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whosoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in the closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Into hell. Yeah, I say unto you, fear him. So basically what Christ is letting you know is when these things come upon the people of the earth, you either going to fear this system, you either going to fear the people with all these guns and turrets and nukes and all this shit, or you're going to fear the Most High who created everything that comes into existence. Because at the end of the day, when these people try to come against the Most High, Christ, the holy angels, they're going to lose a losing battle. That's going back into Revelation chapter 12. You see what I'm saying? So you have a choice to make. You can either capitulate to the system and worship the image and be and capitulate, which the vast majority of people on earth can, is going to do. Or you can have the spirit of that line. You can have the spirit of might and you can stand up to the falsehoods, to the false ideologies, because at the end of the day, they're going to stop trying to hide and tell you that Christ, that, that Christ is the son of the, the Christ, according to the church, is the son of God. Eventually, they're going to tell you that that's a false image of who the actual Christ of the Bible is. And they're going to reveal to you that that's Tammuz. They're going to reveal to you that that's Osiris. They're going to reveal to you that that's Saturn. They're going to show you and tell you blatantly. Like LeBron versus Father Tom, they're telling you that Saturn in your face. You got a picture with Messi and Ronaldo. They're literally showing you who these who these guys are. And essentially, it's going to come a point in time where all those things are going to be revealed. And only those who have the courage to stand up against this system because it's predestined for them to get the understanding. They're going to see the light and they're going to see it through to the end. You see what I'm saying? And you brothers have to be able to relish in that. You have to be able to love the fact that most people are not going to understand you. Because at the end of the day, if most people don't understand you, it's because you're special. Because most people on this earth live a vain existence. This is uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. It says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So what did Christ say? He said that you're blessed if people will persecute you because you follow the most high. You follow his words. Um, and, and you essentially you have to go through hell for it because you want to seek the kingdom of the most high because you lay up treasures in heaven. You don't lay up treasures in this vain existence. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter six.
This is Luke chapter 6, verse 20. It says, And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be you poor, for yours is the kingdom of, of the Most High. Blessed are ye that hunger, for you shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep, for you shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men will hate you and shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manners did their fathers unto the prophets. And that's the understanding that everything that they taught you in this world was completely backwards. They told you to love all. They told you to come together with all. They told you to get the validation of all because, quote unquote, God is love. They're talking about the God Pan. They weren't talking about the God of the Bible. The Most High is a God of love, but he's also a God who has indignation. He's also a God who hates abominations who hates wickedness who wants you to forsake those ways and to not come together with those who are unclean does the most high want you to love a satanist does the most high want you to love somebody who blasphemes his name does the most high want you to love somebody who blasphemes his holy word and lies about who his holy people are of course not because the most high hates lies and he hates those that justify the wicked but persecute the righteous so at the end of the day, if you're not walking in the ways of the Most High, how can the Most High really be in you? Because he said his spirit will fill you and you will walk in his ways. If you walk in the ways of the world, the Most High is not dealing with you. Again, ye who are friends of the world are an enemy of the Most High. It don't make no sense for you to love everybody if the Most High blatantly tells you that he hates and he didn't make the world for the vast majority of people who walk on this earth right now. So it's all hypocrisy and lies. And let's go to the book of Luke chapter 18. How you doing? So this is the book of Luke chapter 18, verse 6. It says, And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. Let's go to verse 7. So like my, my, my fingers is freezing right now. Give me one second, brothers. All right, verse seven, it says, and shall not the most high avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear along with them. I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. So essentially we're gonna come into a time where the elect are gonna get raised up and they're gonna be strengthened with the power of the most high, but the vast majority of people are gonna lose faith. And the vast majority of people are gonna believe in a way that's going off pertaining to a lot of these false doctrines so again y'all brothers you sisters whoever's watching this you brothers and sisters have a choice to make because the way of the, of, the, of the word the way according to the holy bible it is being made plain upon tables so there ain't no excuses there ain't oh i didn't know i didn't hear the word or oh i didn't have time to study hey bro the most high is gonna make it plain upon tables so if you choose not to follow it it's because you ultimately didn't want to at the end of the day this is, uh, and I'm going to just end it at that. I was going to keep going, but I think this is a good lesson. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Lord willing, you brothers will continue to move on the path to truth and forsake the lies, no matter how hard it may be, no matter how much sorrow it might be. 